Hello everyone, today, we are diving into the fascinating world of printed cross-dipole antennas. Whether you're a student, an engineer, or just curious about antenna technology, this video will provide you with a comprehensive understanding of these sophisticated devices. Let's get started. The cross-dipole antenna, a versatile type of antenna composed of two orthogonal dipoles. This structure allows the antenna to radiate signals in both horizontal and vertical polarizations simultaneously, making it suitable for various applications that require polarization diversity. A basic cross dipole consists of two dipole arms placed at right angles to each other. This antenna type is widely used in systems requiring circular or dual polarization, such as satellite communications and modern wireless technologies. Cross dipole antennas with slant polarizations are widely used in base station applications for cellular networks, offering improved signal quality and polarization diversity. The antenna consists of two dipole elements arranged orthogonally, with each dipole oriented at a minus and plus 45 degree angle to the vertical axis, creating two slanted polarizations. This design provides dual polarized radiation with one dipole providing plus 45 degree polarization and the other providing minus 45 degree polarization. Actually, the dipoles are fed with signals at the same frequency but with orthogonal polarizations. This crossed arrangement improves signal reception in environments where the orientation of user devices can vary, providing more consistent performance. There are some critical aspects of designing a cross dipole antenna. First, impedance matching. Proper impedance matching is essential for minimizing signal reflections and losses. Balloon usage. A balloon helps ensure a balanced feed to the antenna, improving performance and reducing undesired effects like current imbalance. Bandwidth optimization. The bandwidth of cross dipole antennas can be expanded by modifying the antenna structure with full wave simulation software such as CST Studio Suite or HFSS. The main applications where cross dipole antennas are commonly used in telecommunication systems, satellite systems, radar systems, and MIMO systems. Here are some advantages and limitations of cross dipole antennas. Advantages Dual polarization capability enhances signal quality and reliability, especially in multipath environments. Compact design makes it suitable for space constrained applications. Limitations Feeding network design can be complex, especially when aiming for precise polarization control. Manufacturing challenges requires precision, especially when integrating into complex systems like satellite arrays. As you see in this slide, there are different types of cross dipole antennas based on their structure, fabrication method, and application. A printed cross dipole antenna is essentially made up of two dipole antennas placed orthogonally to achieve dual polarization. In the following slides, you can see the different views and the key parameters of a prided cross dipole antenna structure that we are going to design it by CST Studio Suite. In this slide, we provide the optimized design parameters for the cross dipole antenna. These parameters have been calculated based on the desired frequency range and performance requirements. Now that we have a solid understanding of the theory, it's time to move on to the practical side. We'll use CST Studio Suite to design the antenna based on the parameters we've discussed. Let's get started with CST Studio Suite. Open CST Studio Suite and create a new project. Start by selecting New Project. From the template options, Choose microwave and RF optical. Select antennas, then choose planar antennas. Choose the frequency domain solver for our analysis. Click next. Set the frequency range to 1 GHz to 3 GHz, which covers our frequency of interest. Click next and then finish to create the project. Go to the parameter list section and add the design parameters for the antenna as discussed in the previous slide.
The next step is to step to find the first dipole element. Navigate to Modeling, select Brick, and press ESC to bring up the dialog box. In the dialog box, create a rectangular shape for the first dipole element. Change the component name to Antenna 1, the long x-axis. Based on the optimized design parameters, enter the dimensions for Antenna 1. From the Materials section, select Load from Material Library. Choose Taconic RF3 as the dielectric material and click OK to apply the material to the dipole element 1. To create the remaining layout for dipole 1, we'll use the Curve tool. Select Curves, then select Polygon, and in the dialog box, enter the points that define the shape of the dipole's remaining layout.
Once the shape is defined, press OK to create the curve. Now it is the time to adjust the position of the curve. If you zoom in, you'll notice that the curve is located at the center of the dielectric. To position it at the edge, use the transform option. Select the curve, then go to modeling, then transform and move the curve to the desired edge of the dielectric laminate. Now, we need to create a similar curve at the opposite edge of the dielectric. Select the existing curve, go to modeling, and use the transform option to move the curve to the opposite edge, at a distance of HC as defined earlier. To continue the design process by filling out the space between the two design curves, follow these steps in CST Studio Suite. Go to the Modeling tab and select the Create Shapes from Curves option. From the drop-down menu, select Loft Curves. Now, select the two curves that you previously created on the opposite edges of the dielectric. After selecting both curves, press Enter to confirm the selection. This will create a smooth surface between the two curves, effectively filling the gap and completing the dielectric layout of the first dipole element. Once you've filled the space between the two curves, it's time to complete the remaining dielectric layout of the first dipole by mirroring it along the x-axis. Follow these steps. First, select the dielectric layout you just created by lofting the curves. Navigate to the Modeling tab and select the Transform option. Choose the Mirror operation. In the Transform dialog box, select the Mirror option. In the Settings, enter 1 in the blank space in the front of X. Press OK or Apply to mirror the dielectric layout along the X-axis. This will create a symmetrical structure, effectively completing the dielectric layout for the first dipole. After this step, you can proceed to design the second dipole or move on to other structural adjustments or feeding designs. Since the structure is symmetrical, we can utilize the dielectric substrate created for dipole 1 to design dipole 2. By rotating the layout of dipole 1 around the y-axis, we'll generate the layout for dipole 2. Begin by selecting the entire structure of dipole 1. In the Modeling tab, select Transform. From the Transformation tools, choose Rotate. Select the Component option in the Below section of the box. Then change the component name. It helps us having each dipole element in an independent component. In the Rotate settings, select the Y-axis as the axis of rotation. Set the rotation angle to 90 degrees. This will rotate the structure, placing dipole to perpendicular to dipole 1. Press OK or Apply to complete the rotation. Now that the basic structure of the two dipoles is in place, the next step is to add the essential components, metal layers for each dipole, feeding networks, slots between the metal layers, and dielectric substrates. First, let's save the simulation file. To focus on completing the design of Antenna 1 without the visual clutter from Antenna 2, you can hide the components of Antenna 2 in the navigation tree. In the navigation tree on the left side of CST Studio Suite, right-click on Antenna 2 to open the context menu. From the menu, select the Hide option. This will hide all the components of Antenna 2, making it easier to focus solely on Antenna 1 while completing its design. Now, select Dielectric Components Created by Curves and go to Boolean, and press Add button. These dielectric components will be united. To create the PEC or perfect electric conductor layer on the top and back of Antenna 1, follow these steps. Press S on your keyboard to activate the Surface Selection tool. Click on the dielectric surface of Antenna 1 to select it. With the dielectric surface selected, 
go to the Modeling tab and select Extrude Surface. In the dialog box that appears, enter the value TS as the thickness of the PEC material. This will define the thickness of the PEC layer. In the Materials section, select BC from the Material Library. Then, ensure the component is assigned to Antenna 1 so that this PEC layer is associated with the correct part of your design. Click OK or Apply to finalize the creation of the PEC layer. To create a slot on the dielectric of dipole antenna 1, in the Modeling tab, select Brick to define the rectangular shape that will represent the slot on the dielectric. After creating the rectangular shape for the slot, you will need to subtract this shape from the dielectric to create the actual slot. Go to Boolean Operations in the Modeling tab and select Subtract. Choose the dielectric as the object to subtract from and the rectangular brick as the object to subtract. Apply the subtraction operation, which will remove the rectangular section from the dielectric, leaving a slot. To create the slots that will define the dipole arms for dipole antenna 1, you can follow the same process used for the dielectric slot. First create a rectangular shape with the same dimension with the slot, then subtract it from PC layer. In this step, select Dielectric Components of Dipole Antenna 1, and go to Boolean, and press Add button. The Select Dielectric Components will be united as C. Now, start to create PC layer for this surface of Dipole Antenna 1. Press S on your keyboard to activate the Surface Selection tool. Click on the Dielectric Surface of Antenna 1 to select it. With the Dielectric Surface selected, go to the Modeling tab and select Extrude Surface. In the dialog box that appears, enter the value TS as the thickness of the PEC material. This will define the thickness of the PEC layer. Now, it is the time to create the slot on this surface of the dipole antenna 1. Following the same method as before, create a slot that subtracts it from this surface.
the created slot separates two arms of dipole 1 from each other's. The final step for designing dipole 1 is to draw its feeding network. To design the feeding network for dipole antenna 1, we will use the modeling tool and the brick function in CST Studio Suite. It seems that I made a mistake to enter the exact amount of a design parameter. The correct amount for parameter L12 is 13.19. In the parameter list, find the entry for L12. This parameter is likely associated with a specific dimension of the length of the feeding network dimensions. After modifying L12, press enter or click outside the box to confirm the new value. CST will automatically update the model with the new value for L12. Now define the last section of the feeding network for dipole antenna 1. At the last step for dipole antenna 1, we will unit the different parts of feeding network. Once the feeding network is designed, dipole antenna 1 is complete. We can now move on to dipole antenna 2. Once you're ready to continue with antenna 2, 
you can simply right-click on antenna to and select show to make it visible again. In the navigation tree on the left side of CST Studio Suite, right-click on Antenna 1 to open the context menu. From the menu, select the Hide option. This will hide all the components of Antenna 1, making it easier to focus solely on Antenna 2 while completing its design. In the next part of the video, we will repeat the same process we used for Antenna 1 to complete the layout of Dipole Antenna 2. To create the PEC layer top surface of Pole 2, press S on your keyboard to activate the Surface Selection tool. Click on the dielectric surface of Antenna 2 to select it. With the dielectric surface selected, Go to the Modeling tab and select Extrude Surface. In the dialog box that appears, enter the value TS as the thickness of the PEC material. This will define the thickness of the PEC layer. Click OK or Apply to finalize the creation of the PEC layer. Repeat the same process we used for Antenna 1 to complete the slots on the dielectric, feeding lines, and the PEC layout of Dipole Antenna 2. Now, start to design feeding lines for Dipole Antenna 2.
Now, start to create PC layer for another surface of Dipole Antenna 2. Press S on your keyboard to activate the Surface Selection tool. Click on the dielectric surface of Antenna 2 to select it. With the dielectric surface selected, go to the Modeling tab and select Extrude Surface. In the dialog box that appears, enter the value TS as the thickness of the PEC material. Now, it is the time to create the slot on this surface of the dipole antenna 2. Following the same method as before, create a slot that subtracts it from this surface.
Once you're ready to continue with run simulations, we can simply right click on Antenna 1 and select show all to make all components visible. The last part of this antenna design is to create a ground plane. Through the modeling and brick, create a ground plane for the design cross dipole antenna. Consider 0.2 millimeters as thickness for ground plane. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to define waveguide ports to feed dipole antennas 1 and 2. By pressing the S key on your keyboard, select the end surface of the feeding network for antenna 1. Click on simulation in the top menu, from there, select waveguide port. A waveguide port should cover a space around the end of the transmission line. As a result, we need to specify these margins in the waveguide port setting. We apply a margin of 5 times HS to the right, left, and top sides of the waveguide ports. Moreover, the waveguide port covers the edge of the dielectric. To cover the bottom edge of the dielectric, we consider a margin of HS. In the same process, define a waveguide port for another dipole antenna. As of now, everything appears to have been completed. Before starting the simulation, we should define some frequency specifications to see radiation patterns at far field. Go to the field monitor, then active the button of far field, RCS and define other settings like me. Now, go to Setup Solver and start simulation.
After finishing simulation, by clicking on S parameters folder see the S11, S21, and S22 for the cross dipole antenna. To see farfield radiation patterns, go to farfield folder and select the frequency point of 2 GHz for antenna 1. Now, you can see the 3D radiation pattern at 2 GHz. Since the polarization of this antenna is linear, press the linear directional button in the setting. And also, you can see 3D radiation pattern for dipole 2 at to GHZ by choosing to gigahertz point in the far field folder for dipole antenna 2. Also, 2D plots of radiation patterns can be seen here. In the Cartesian plot, if we want to see the radiation beam in the angle between minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees, we should go to Farfield Properties and active these two options. Through Farfield Plot menu, we can see all details for radiation pattern like directivity, IEEE gain, realized gain, power flow, copolar, crosspolar, and axial ratio for different cutting angles. That brings us to the end of this tutorial on designing cross dipole antennas. I hope you found this video helpful and that you're no more confident in creating your own designs. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more tutorials on antenna design and other RF topics. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.